Does the rapid transformation of family structure mean that the family is in decline? Or are we instead simply witnessing the democratisation of family life? Some sociologists have argued that the move away from a nuclear heterosexual family structure has led to a decline in the institution of the family itself and the values and functions that attach to it. Those using the language of decline claim that many of the social ills that we see in society today, such as child abuse, crime, truancy, substance abuse, juvenile delinquency and unemployment, can be attributed to moves away from a particular type of family life, nuclear, heterosexual, with much lower divorce rates, women staying at home with young children. They argue that changes in family life have weakened family bonds and the quality of relationships within families, which in turn threaten social cohesion more generally. To understand the link that's made between family decline and the weakening of social bonds, we have to return to the question of the functions of the family in society. Families can be viewed as integral to the creation of social networks and as a conduit to broader forms of community engagement and participation. For example, marriage can be a way to anchor individuals within a network of extended family and friends. This is particularly important when families are also viewed as an important site for the transmission of behavioural norms. It's hoped that if children begin to build strong connections to communities through their families from a younger age, they will be more likely to become engaged and active citizens in adulthood. Similarly, families are seen as sites where individuals can learn to take responsibility for children and other dependent family members as parents, which will teach them to be more socially responsible as community members as well. From this perspective, strong family units are central to a cohesive society with strong bonds between members of that society. The family decline thesis is that the weakening of the family as a social institution is due to the prioritisation of individual needs and desires over the family and society. This in turn is said to lead to weakened communities that can't weather social problems. A leading example here is the work of American sociologist David Popineau, who has argued that individualism, with its emphasis on self-fulfilment and the pursuit of individual rather than collective interests, is in direct opposition to what he terms familism. He argues that individualism has led to precarious and expendable relationships within the family, which are only maintained for as long as they deliver satisfaction for the parties involved, and then they're disposed of. Proponents of the decline thesis believe that this phenomenon is a reflection of a selfish and individualistic society, where people are only concerned with what makes them happy in the moment, and not with the overall well-being of their families and of society more broadly. Popino is especially concerned with what family decline means for children's well-being. He suggests that if individualism continues to prevail and family bonds continue to weaken, adults will no longer be willing to give adequate attention to the care of children. Changing gender roles are viewed as a particular threat to the cohesion of the family in this regard. For example, women's increased workforce participation may be viewed as a negative phenomenon when it's seen to deprive children of socialisation within the family. In contrast, sociologists who disagree with the family decline thesis remind us that it's mistaken simply to assume that all families are good role models of strong, healthy relationships and civic engagement. Nuclear families are not exempt from being violent, abusive or otherwise dysfunctional. Additionally, even if structural change in family life has weakened the internal bonds within the family, it's questionable whether this does then translate to weaker communities and societies. An alternative perspective on the relationship between family and society suggests that family bonds may actually conflict with community relations if family relationships and obligations are prioritised above other sorts of social ties. In these circumstances, the decline of the family may have a positive impact on community life in that it may lead to greater levels of association, trust and reciprocity outside the family. Sociologists who interpret the changes in family life as a positive transformation, rather than looking at them through the lens of decline, point out that while some family ties may have become weakened, others have become stronger. For example, while women may spend more time in paid work, men have become more involved in raising children, giving male parents more opportunity to strengthen their relationships with their children. Similarly, while divorce inevitably results in the breakdown of some familial ties, it can allow for the possibility of new bonds to be formed, rather than maintaining unhealthy and unhappy relationships. Anthony Giddens is a leading example of those sociologists who disagree with the thesis that contemporary families are defined by individualism and selfishness. Instead, family sociologists increasingly believe that we should view contemporary families as aiming for the embodiment of trust, reciprocity and equality, and for being more conducive to egalitarian relationships. 
Giddens argues, for example, that in recent decades the family has become more democratised, evident in greater choice of family structure and more egalitarian relationships between men and women. For Giddens, the main characteristic of relationships and families in late modernity are that they're defined by choice to a greater extent than they were in the past. Families are no longer formed simply because that's what everyone has always done, but are instead based on love, intimacy and an experience of sexuality that's separate from procreation, a phenomenon made possible by contraception. In contemporary Western societies, families are more likely to be created because it's what people want and desire, not because of social expectations. This means that most people in the West have more freedom to make decisions about marriage, separation and childbearing without the same level of societal pressure that they would have experienced in previous decades. Giddens suggests that this allows for the formation of what he calls pure relationships, loving relationships that are not simply formed and maintained out of a sense of duty to society. If relationships are no longer held together by law, tradition or financial necessity, individuals need to take seriously the needs and desires of their partner, which ideally underpins healthier and more fulfilling family relationships. From this perspective, the increased level of negotiation required in modern relationships is not an indication of the decline of the family, but of the democratisation of relations between men and women, between partners and in intimate relationships, and between adults and children. The problems in family life, such as child abuse and family violence, are, from this perspective, the result of falling short of these ideals, rather than of a widespread rejection of the concept of the family as an ideal to be valued and nurtured. In summary, rapid transformations in family structure have led to the theory that the family is in decline and that now weakened family bonds in turn threaten social cohesion. Second, proponents of the family decline thesis state that this phenomenon is a reflection of an individualistic society where people are only concerned about their own happiness and not about the well-being of society as a whole. Third, in contrast, sociologists who interpret the changes in family life as a positive transformation point out that while some family ties may have become weakened, others have become stronger. Fourth, as Giddens suggests, it's possible that we are instead witnessing the democratisation of family life, as families today are more likely to be formed out of trust, reciprocity and equality, and are more conducive to egalitarian relationships.